AMD has been pretty clear about what their mission is with the 14 nanometer Polaris GPUs. The company is on a mission to reclaim market share and therefore it makes sense to go after the largest market segment. This means rather than starting with the big boys, AMD are doing things a bit differently this time around. With over 80% of the gaming GPU market dominated by $100 to $300 graphics cards, this is where the bulk of the market share is won and lost. That being the case, AMD's first strike will be made at the $200 price range with the RX 480. The Radeon RX 480 will cost $200 US for the 4GB model and $240 US for the 8GB model that I tested here. Like all Polaris GPUs, the RX 480 is based on the 4th generation GCN architecture, which AMD claims boasts up to 15% more performance per compute unit than GPUs using the 2nd generation GCN architecture. AMD says that 4th gen GCN delivers improved geometry processing, an updated memory controller, better memory compression, enhanced buffers, true audio next, real time and prioritized async compute, among other things. For Polaris, AMD selected Samsung and Global Foundry's 14 nanometer FinFET based process, which is the densest foundry process available. FinFET transistors are crucial to reducing power consumption and enable operating voltages that are 150 millivolts lower than the previous generation, thereby cutting active power by 30% from a 1 volt baseline. In contrast, NVIDIA is using TSMC's 16 nanometer FinFET based process, so it'll be interesting to see how they compare in terms of size and efficiency. Typically, NVIDIA has had the upper hand in terms of efficiency for some time now, and with Pascal proving to be their most efficient architecture yet, we're banking on big things from AMD. AMD has announced two GPUs to be based on the Polaris 10 die, the biggest of which is a 2304 stream processor enabled Radeon RX 480, which does use the full silicon. The die measures just 232mm squared and crams in 5.7 billion transistors. This makes the die incredibly small for a GPU, claiming 5.8 teraflops of compute power. In terms of physical size, this means the RX 480 GPU is similar to the R7 370, a GPU with just 1024 SPUs for just 2 teraflops of compute power. In total, there are 36 compute units resulting in 2,304 stream processors along with 144 texture mapping units and 32 render output units or raster operation pipelines depending on your naming preference. These core specifications place the RX 480 squarely between the Radeon R9 380X and R9 390. When compared to the R9 390 though, the RX 480 does have one major disadvantage, memory bandwidth. Both the 4GB and 8GB models feature GDDR5 memory clocked at 2000MHz using a 256-bit wide memory bus resulting in a throughput of 256GB per second. In comparison, the R9 390 utilizes a 512-bit memory bus, and although it uses lower clocked memory, it still achieves a 384GB per second throughput. Propping up the RX 480 is the core clock speed, which has been set at 1120MHz and can boost as high as 1266MHz. That's a 27% boost over the R9-390's operating frequency and should help account for having 10% fewer cores. Truth be told, 1266MHz isn't a particularly high operating frequency for a 14 nanometer part given NVIDIA are pushing more complex GPUs to around 2000MHz using their GPU Boost 3.0 technology. Therefore, I'd be expecting to squeeze quite a bit more out of the RX 480. Sadly, it wasn't to be, as you'll see in my overclocking video. It is possible my reference card was just a dud. I won't know for sure until others post their results, which will have happened by the time you view this video. Speaking of the reference card, let's take a look at what AMD has put together here. In terms of design, we don't have anything radically new. The RX 480 essentially borrows its design from the previous generation's R9 380. The design is simple and understated, yet attractive. There aren't any fancy LED lights, no backplate, and the fan shroud is plastic. Still, it's worth keeping in mind that prices start at just $200, so it would be unrealistic to expect the kind of features found on the $400 plus graphics cards. As always, the reference card makes use of a blower style fan that can draw in air from both sides of the card, which can be useful in tight spaces. The kind of tight spaces you'll likely encounter when running two cards together for crossfire. All up, the RX 480 measures 240mm long, though the PCB is just 177mm, so it'll be very easy for board partners to produce smaller ITX type cards right out of the gate. AMD's reference card is also surprisingly light, and this is down to the fact that AMD has gotten away with using a very small heatsink. The heatsink is so small in fact that we would have previously only expected to see this on the lowest end gaming graphics cards, so it'll be interesting to see how hot the RX 480 runs. Of course, we know power consumption is going to be relatively low given not only the TDP rating, but also that single 6-pin power connector. 
Even the previous generation's R9380 featured two 6-pin connectors and you had to step down to the R7370 before you found just a single PCIe power connector. In fact, the PCB design and configuration looks more like a GeForce GTX 960. On board we find a 6 plus 1 phase power design and 8 GDDR5 memory chips for a total VRAM capacity of 8GB. Interestingly, AMD has rated the RX 480 at 150 watts for the TDP, which is the same figure Nvidia gave the GTX 1070. This rating seems quite high given the specifications and the fact that this is a 14 nanometer part. Now that you have a better understanding of the Radeon RX 480's specs and design, be sure to check out my in-depth benchmark analysis video here. Thanks for joining me again, I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.